Welcome to today's reflective act of worship from Newcastle Cathedral. We hope you will find it helpful as we gather today from many different places, yet one in faith and hope. As God's people, we have gathered. Let us worship God together. Wherever you may be, try to find a still place, a safe place, a place where you can take a moment to pause in body, mind and spirit. Remember that there are many others, both near and far away, pausing and praying with you in this moment too. Let us pray. Faithful one, whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer and shape our lives for the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Having stilled and prepared ourselves to hear God's word for us, let us listen to the Gospel reading appointed for today. John chapter 12, verses 1 to 8. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, to the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume, but Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, why was this perfume not sold for three hundred denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put in it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. Remembering that the word of God is living and active, let us now reflect on what God might be saying to us today through this passage of scripture. Today's reflection is offered by Canon Rob. There's a scene in Blackadder where Baldrick has managed to get hold of an enormous amount of money. And Baldrick, whose main uh, ambition in life seems to be the acquisition of turnips, has just gone out and spent this entire fortune on an enormous turnip. Blackadder is utterly despairing. And that's a silly example. But there's an element of this in the story from our Gospel today. Mary pours over Jesus' feet a, a, a year's salary worth of perfume. Amazing, expensive perfume poured out on the floor. Surely this is total extravagance. Surely the money could have been used for a better purpose. Yeah, give the man a present, but this much? That could have fed the poor for a whole year. Think of it another way. A church is given a large legacy and chooses to spend it on refitting the sanctuary rather than giving it away to the local shelter which desperately needs the money. Again, surely the money could have been used better to fund projects which help those most in need. But what about this? I have given, perhaps, my life to helping others. 
have worked tirelessly to care for the poor and to be an advocate for them. I have given those whom Jesus most cared for all my time and energy. But what have I given to Jesus himself? The passage here speaks to me of priorities. Mary arrives at the party and anoints Jesus with perfume that would have cost a year's wages. The room is filled with the sweet smell of the ointment and then it's gone. Jesus doesn't react in the way that we might expect him to. He receives the anointing. He accepts it. He accepts what is for Mary an act of love and gratitude for the way that he has accepted her. And instead, he turns on those who are criticising it. The poor you will always have with you, he says, but you will not always have me. Now, Jesus isn't saying, don't bother with the poor, because they're always going to be with you. It isn't some sort of defeatist realism that makes it okay for us to ignore the poor. No, it seems to me that this passage is about priorities. Jesus says that there are two laws. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and your mind and your strength. And then he says the second is like it. Love your neighbour as yourself. And that these two laws sum up everything else. The anointing is an act of lavish love and gratitude addressed to God. It is an act of loving God with heart, mind and strength. That's what Mary is doing. To have given the money to the poor would have been to obey the second commandment. Jesus is acknowledging that this is an act of obeying the first. It is important to do the first commandment first. He doesn't say, don't bother with the second. Or to say that the second is unachievable. Instead, he affirms the fact that she has loved the Lord her God with all her heart and her mind and her strength. As Christians, we are called to love our neighbours as ourselves, to to see the poor and those on the margins and those who are disadvantaged as our neighbours and to care for them. And that call is hard enough. But we are also called to love God with all our heart and our mind and our strength. And perhaps sometimes that commandment is even harder. There is a danger that we do one and neglect the other. But our first call is to love God. And our second call, which cannot be separated from it, because we want to love God with all of us, with all our heart and our mind and our strength, is to go from there, to, and because of that, to then love and serve our neighbour. But it's in that order. To love God and then to love neighbour. The second, if it is to be true, must surely only flow from the first. So what are our priorities? Take a moment, press pause if you want, to reflect on what, if anything, struck you during today's reflection. Were there words of comfort? Were there words of challenge? And now, remembering that all are precious in God's sight, let us pray. Lord Jesus, as today we remember those with whom you shared your earthly life, the meals and the friendships through which you began to bring in your kingdom, Help us to cherish those you give us for short or longer times to share our lives with. As in Mary and Martha and Lazarus, help us to discern 
what the people around us have to teach us about your life. And to be attentive to the people in whom you challenge us to see your face, your hands, your feet. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, as today we remember the perfume Mary poured over your feet, help us in this day and in the days to come, like Mary, to find those moments where in our lives we can linger with you. And lingering with you, help us to discern where and how you are calling us to spend our lives and our resources for the coming of your kingdom now where we are. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, as today we also remember Judas Iscariot and those like him, help us to see and to repent of the times when we have been mean as opposed to generous. Be with all those today who, like Judas, find their lives and their livelihoods sustained by greed and self-seeking. For all who have lost their way and whose lives are bound up with circumstances from which they struggle to set themselves free. Lord, have mercy. God, our Father, whose son enjoyed the love of his friends Mary, Martha and Lazarus in learning, argument and hospitality. May we so rejoice in your love that the world may come to know the depths of your wisdom, the wonder of your compassion and your power to bring life out of death through the merits of Jesus Christ, our friend and brother, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and watch over you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly on you and give you peace and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us dwell in the peace and protection of God this day and always. Amen. Thank you for joining us in worship today. If you have enjoyed it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel for the next upload or visit the Cathedral's website. The information is on the screen. Now may God bless you and watch over you and those you love this day and always.